get you. Sean, before we get to the scenes in the final, I actually wonder what you made of the performance before then. Um, I, I thought we weren't at it. I thought they were. I think they're a good outfit anyway. Um, but they were better than us on the night. Um, not by not by a longer shot. We weren't in massive trouble. We weren't getting rings round round us or anything like that. But just the feel of the game. We never we never committed to either way of playing. If we were playing long, we never really got after it and, and chased the game and forced the game. And if we were playing short, we never really played with any kind of endeavour to go forwards with a purpose. Um, so I thought we were short where we have been. On the other hand, I mean, the, the balance of football is it, it lasts for 96 minutes on this occasion. And the mentality that I've asked the players to continue growing is that relentlessness. And I thought that was on show. Um, you know, changing players, changing the feel of the game. Quite obviously, just going right, but we're playing forward onto their back line as many times as we can for the last 10 minutes by putting Keno up there. And it works. And sometimes that's what you've got to do to make sure you, you look after yourselves in the Premier League. And it's something that I've needed to do many times before, and I was pleased that it worked. Do you think there was any reason or is there anything that you can put your finger on for that kind of... Yeah, the, the no, it's a, no, it's a funny thing. I've, I've just been chatting to someone else about it. And the hardest thing as a manager when it's a collective down day because, trust me, it's been a really positive training week. You can imagine after a really good performance and a very controlled performance away. Really positive training week. Everyone's ready. And yet we come out just with that kind of... I always call it everyone waiting for someone else to do something. You know, that kind of atmosphere when it's just... You know, sort of everyone just waiting for one of their teammates or someone to score a goal or whatever. And of course, we so nearly did. I mean, I think Dom's heel was offside for the goal and a great cross from uh, Miko and Dwight has a header, which, you know, you know on another day, you, you're hoping he puts it in. So don't get me wrong, I mean, that could have changed the whole feeling of everything. But we never really got to grips with the game and slightly better in the second half, but not a lot, I didn't think. And then the last 10 minutes, ironically, to what I've just said, I certainly, my stuff. You could sense. You thought, "Hang on a minute, we're we're knocking on the door all of a sudden," you know. And 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 when we when we did score, I, was, I wasn't that surprised because I felt that the the energy and the feeling of the game had changed, albeit for a short period. So I was I was pleased in the end to keep the unbeaten run going and get a point. And then Beto got that moment. He looked so emotional at the end. You must be really pleased for him. Yeah, I, d I didn't see the end point, but um, yeah, I mean, look, uh, Brian Clough used to have a saying. Sometimes you've got to get hurt to score a goal, and I thought he was willing to. He's in the mix, he throws his header in, it's a good header. Great play from Youngie to, you know, really controlled, um, knock back across. Um, you know, and it just goes to show you, you look, nothing you don't know by. Of course, there's teams in this division, your Arsenal's, your Man City's, and all, they can stick to what they do and they can find goals and they're relentless to, you know, to the last breath in a different way. We've got to operate in different ways. That's the squad we've got. That's the task in front of us to make sure we secure ourselves in the Premier League season after season. And I'm pleased with that. You know, you've got to adapt sometimes. And I thought the group adapted. There was no uh, no lack of effort again, just that lack of detail in the performance. But when the detail mattered at the end, we go and score a goal. And, and that's an important factor over a season. And do you know anything about McNeil's injury? Not yet. Not yet. I'm not sure yet, but he obviously had to come off. And, you know, the delay and people are shouting at me. I'm going, I've got to see if he's going to carry on because he was sort of like on the edge. So hopefully it's nothing too serious. Thank you. Thanks. Sure. Sean, Beto spoke about um, how much it means to him and how hard work pays off. It must feel good as a manager that some, you have a player who's not playing, but gets on with it. No, but he has been he has been working hard. He's been working hard in training. The staff have been working hard with him, so they deserve credit as well, doing extras and bits and you know, showing him clips and various things, including myself. And his development curve has been a, a delayed one. You know, he didn't come into the game professionally for not so long ago in, in relative terms. And coming into the Premier League, I've said all along it's different, you know, it's different, it's difficult, especially as a striker. Um and I think he continues to work hard and he's got his rewards tonight just from you know, the thing I keep saying to him, you don't have to be pure when you're a striker like you, but you have to be a handful and you have to be awkward and you have to grow in that. It's a real weapon, that. And I thought he was when he came on tonight. You know, it's, you can find different ways of operating to affect the opposition. And he certainly did. And I thought Keno did as well when he went up there. Do you think that can now kickstart a run for him to come in? I don't know. Look, it's, it's, a, it's a moment in time, but it's nice to think that it reinforces the work he's been doing and he'll certainly add to his belief. That's for sure. Just about it. Sean, what does Beto need to do to start games more regularly? Just continue learning and, and get to a point when we've got a, a bank of history for him, when he understands the Premier League. He's, we've spoken to him a lot about the defensive side of things. He's still getting to grips with that, as is Dom, actually. You know, working from the front, defending from the front. 
it's one of them sides of the game that is forever important now with, with the modern centre forward. You know, it's not just stand up there and try and score. The game's changed. Centre forwards now have to defend and they have to defend cutely. I'm not on about big tackles or anything like that. Getting passing lanes, cutting off the pass, usually to a deep line midfield player. They're important factors and he's got to continue to learn that side as well as, of course, um, scoring goals. You mentioned earlier that <coughs> the, the task this season is to ensure Everton predominantly, first and foremost, stay as a Premier League outfit. Was that outlined to you at the start of the season? From, from it's the outlined season? to me when I got the job. Um, it's, it changed radically. It was a lot worse than what I got told when I came in. I've, I've shared that with you before. So if you look for since then, we've, we've brought money in and spent less and we've, we've reduced the wages significantly. And we're developing players who are now worth probably a lot more than they were when I got in here. So they're the things at the outside of what I have to do. And that's not a problem to me. That's just the challenge. But I've never lost sight, as we discussed just recently. You've got to win games. That's my job. I'm the manager. You know, no one cares about the rest of it. I have to care about it because it's my job. But no one else cares. Everton just want to win a game. And we're just beginning to show signs we can win games. And, and if we're not going to win, we don't get beat. And I think that's growing again. But we're always a work in progress. That's quite obvious.